Well, howdy, 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 ho! Can y'all smell that? I smell depressed love in the air. <laughs> but let's get right into it. Let's bring in my co-host for this week. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that! Terrible. Face. It's terrible. <laughs> He's mourning the loss. No Why? more denim jeans and mustaches. Why, Jeff? Why'd Why? you have to leave? Why? Makes me think of a song I heard. Jeffy, come back. Any fool can see. I was wrong for trying to say, oh, shave your stash. Oh, Wait. Lord, have mercy, guys. I can't believe it. You can see right here on this slide, I'm in tears in my sweet ass bomber jacket. But, you know, we've got. Look, Jeff's looking the other way. He's not going to even look at you and I. I got the cold shoulder. He walked out the door, broke my heart, left it in pieces on the floor. You know, terrible. I just wrote a little song there. <laughs> I mean, you got to think about it. At first, you was afraid. You was petrified. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, in case you haven't heard, Jeff Fisher stepped down as the coach of the Michigan Panthers in the USFL. Uh, let's give you a little bit of a, of a history. On January 27th, uh, 2022, it was announced that Fisher would become the head coach and general manager of the Michigan Panthers, where he went 2-8 and eight in his tenure as the head coach. Uh, finishing third in the USFL North Division, the Panthers did not qualify for the playoffs. Only two wins came against the one and nine Maulers, whose coach also <laughs> stepped down. <laughs> Where he, he defeated the Maulers in week three and ten, uh, and he secured the number one overall pick in the 2023 draft for the Panthers uh, with that win in week ten. And then on February 3rd, 2023, Fisher resigned as, as head coach of the Michigan Panthers after just one season. We've got a quote for him right here. It says, coaching in the USFL has been an incredible experience, and I am a firm believer the league has tremendous future. I am extremely grateful to our players, coaches, and fans and the excellent leadership at the USFL. Well, no. you know, if, if he was such a big fan of it, I wish he'd have stayed around a little longer. but. Just no, judging, he didn't just, say nothing about the colonel, though. No, he didn't say anything about me, um, which is just disheartening, <laughs> you know. Uh, like I said, I I wish he would have stayed around, but look, I mean, he his first year going two and eight, um, maybe he just <laughs> maybe maybe he just lost <laughs> lost whatever love he had for. For football, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to believe, you know. For, for y'all that ain't really watched when we started up this podcast and everything, this was uh, how, how you would say it, Brian's man crush. Yeah, yeah, this, the mustache man. This, this, this was him. Yeah, and now it's not him. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm I'm broken hearted, man. I am upset. Like I said, he didn't do a good job in the USFL, but you know, it was nice to have somebody with that. Pedigree there, you know. Yeah, but it's just heartbreaking, man. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, producer Wayne is right. You know how quickly things can change in a year. You know he comes in, star of the USFL, has got his dad jeans on, ripped up, got the, got the sunglasses on, mustache like he likes it. You know, oh, sort of man. sort of Sam Elliott like, I would say, <laughs> riding the Harley. You know, we'd have to say probably great value, Sam Elliott. He's he's not up to that level yet. I don't know if he even made it to great value. <laughs> okay, he's Clover Valley. That's the Dollar General version. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was thinking about that or whatever, shop, a Shoppers Mart or uh, 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 there's we'll a ton go. of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the Costco version. Yeah, but you know, it's 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 upsetting. You know. 
clearly he's not going to be a coach in the USFL going forward. I don't think any other team is going to pick him up, do you think? I mean, if anything ever I, happens. I think he did what he could. I mean, I mean – it's <laughs> one and nine to the Maulers. <laughs> well, well, you know his his quarterbacks never panned out. No, and again, this all comes back to they didn't have enough time to click. Yeah, they had no time, and I mean, this is coming off the COVID shit, the restrictions, yeah. and everything yeah. else. And I mean, it's a bunch of things. Now we can't say the same shit for the Maulers, but. Right. You know, we know, this we can really say they just didn't have enough time. You know, enough practicing. You had two fields to practice on. Uh, you know, it's just a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I had very high expectations just because of his tenure in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, according to producer Wayne, we got breaking news: the team was distracted by those dad jeans. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> I know. Who wouldn't I wonder, be? I wonder, work. I wonder if he walked on the field and he started singing, a mustache, a mustache, <laughs> if you only had a mustache. Uh, like I said, it's going to be – I think I'm more upset because I didn't get to meet him, you know. I mean, you tried. You tried. That's, you know, we I, give you that. You was looking. Every time well, we look, go, you yeah, look. I mean, look, I always comb the mustache real nice when we went down there. You know, hoping he would see me in the crowd and flag me down. You know, <laughs> so, like, damn, look at that stash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my wife put the damn counter back up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and go to the next slide and let's see what's happening now. On February third, Mike Nolan was hired by the Michigan Panthers to be their head coach, uh, succeeding Jeff Fisher. This will be the first head coaching job since two thousand eight for Mike Nolan uh, when he was the 49ers head coach in the NFL. His father is former 49ers and Saints coach Dick Nolan. He was born March 7th, 1959. He's at, uh, 63 years old. He played safety at the University of Oregon. Again, you've got somebody with all this NFL talent or NFL experience. You know, Hopefully he lasts longer than one year. Yeah. This just in breaking news. He likes to wear suits like his dad. Well, that that's interesting because, like, you know, you look back on these old NFL films. All these coaches are wearing like, you know, three piece suits on the sidelines. You know, I mean, I want to see somebody wears the suits like Paul Bear Bryant, man. That's what I'm saying. You know, that you know you're in charge when you're coaching wearing a suit. You know what I mean? Can't be like the buyer from Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> we know. Well, but they can try, you know. So, <laughs> well, <My> goodness. <laughs> here is Mike Nolan's coaching resume. As it says up at the top, I've been everywhere, man. And I'm not going to read it, Wayne. Uh, you'll have to be watching the show on YouTube or Spotify to see all the places that he's coached. But it'd be easier for me to tell you the places he has not coached because he, <laughs> he has coached everywhere. It looks like he's mainly a defensive coordinator in a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. You know, he played safety in college and stuff like that. We just discussed that. And this team clearly needs a quarterback and needs an offense. Is he going to be able to put together the coaching staff that's going to give him that? I'd say that's that's going to be a big problem because, I mean, you don't say – I see maybe two offensive – well, no, wide receivers. I think that's the only one I really see. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. He he seems like he's got the defensive down because why else would all these other teams hire him? Yeah. Oh but, yeah. I mean, like he, you know, he's been defensive coordinator for many NFL teams uh, for various stretches. You know, it's not like it was just one and done. And it seems like the the older he's gotten, you know, the the less uh, you know, just going down to linebackers coach and stuff like that. Yeah. But the guy's got experience. I mean, he started coaching in 1981, you know, pretty much before as, a, our time. as a grad assistant in college. Yeah, before our time. Yeah. You know, as far as his coaching resume from the NFL, man, he's he's been on the Giants, the 49ers, the uh, Redskins slash Commanders, the uh, Atlanta Falcons, Ravens, Broncos, Saints, Chargers, Jets, Dolphins, and Cowboys. You know, he's been with a bunch of teams, so he's got that defensive experience. And 
if he's got a good defense, it's going to help his offense for sure. Yeah. But you got to have a quarterback. Got to have a quarterback. You got to have, and you know, makes me think, well, let's go back to 2001 and see how his wide receivers was. Yeah. And, but that's the only one back in 2001 he got wide receivers. Yeah. And I, I mean, this could be, you know, a diamond in the rough for him. This, he might be the, he might bring Michigan, Michigan Panthers back. You never know, but it's going to be hard to beat the Stallions, so. though. Well, you know, they're going to be playing their home games in Detroit, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see if they have a hometown crowd, you know. Brown, did you notice he was a special teams coach? I, I bet he knows a lot about long snapping. Good for him. <laughs> he knows three guys. Then. You might have to hit him <laughs> up and he can teach you something. Besides that hit stick, you know. Well, let's sign, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it's Nolan and the Panthers. We'll have the number one overall draft pick in the 2023 USFL draft. Um, you got, again, Michigan Panthers going to have number one pick. Pittsburgh has number two. Houston, number three. The Memphis Showboats, which were the Tampa Bay Bandits last year, have number four. New Orleans Breakers, number five. Um, Generals of New Jersey, six. Philadelphia Stars, seven. And then Birmingham will have the last pick in the first round because of their championship uh, run. And then Michigan Panthers quarterbacks listed. Uh, you have Eric Berrier, something like that, and then Josh Love. So they don't have any depth at all. No proven commodities at quarterback. But we've got a quote here from Mike Nolan. It says, playing great football and competing at high levels is what the Panthers are going to be about. Our goal is to play with energy and pride for the entire state we represent. I want our fans to be proud to root for the Panthers. That is a great statement. That is what you want your coach to say. Can he back it up? That is true. I mean, be, I, mean I can say this. At least you're not rooting for the Maulers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they well they do have new uniforms and stuff that look better. So Pittsburgh oh, okay. Pittsburgh should play better this year, especially since Mister Wilson's not there no more. So <laughs> he will be in their thoughts and prayers. Yeah, that's right. Well, guys, I, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up, Coach. I'll let you wrap it up. Ah, uh, you want me to wrap it up? I'll wrap it up like a Christmas present under a tree. But well, that is it. From Coach's Corner News, I'd like to thank Brian coming on with me and helping me out with that long list of stuff. But, hey, get on there, buy a shirt for your loved one, or if you don't love them, buy a shirt anyway. Uh, help out the children's hospital stuff, and get on there, buy old catfish shirt for catfish. And, hey, we'll make some more shirts. We might make our daily life bios. We never know. Listen to the Colonel laugh. You could hear him. I know. He's not muted. But with that, I'd like to say y'all stay classy. We love you. Like us. Love us. Share us. And with that, we're out of here. God bless you.